I was asleep, it was about 2 a.m. in the morning, and we got a call, and uh, apparently the fire started with the guys are coming out for break, and they all actually had gloves on, and they put their gloves near an infrared heater, and it was in our maintenance shop, I believe. The guys came out of the room that were in there, and then uh, half an hour later, somebody went back and opened the door, and the door blew off because oxygen rushed in, and it had been sucking all the oxygen out of the room, and it was just getting into the panel. 10 or 12 inches of snow by then, and we got over there. It was tough getting over there. None of the roads were plowed, and um, some of the snow drifts were, were as tall as the truck, and, and it took me about three hours to come you know, 30 miles. They were having to hold Bob back because he was going to go inside, and I think a couple firemen physically held him back from going in there. Anybody know Bob Burris? Yeah. Uh, don't have it. It took. It would take at least know. two of them to hold him back. So yeah. he was yeah. going from outside into the he building. He was going to go in yeah. there uh -huh. for these people. Pallets got burning, even though it was a pallet of ice cream, and as it melted, it somewhat self-extinguished. But the fire got so hot, I think the smoke damage, and it just kept burning. Yep. And then these are some of the panels uh, taken from the from That's the inside. Inside. That's yeah. right. So these are the freezer panels. And basically, the fire blew out one of the sections um, of the freezer panels. Here's a good section. This is the freezer. This is the, the shop that was burnt. You can see they replaced these panels and where it burnt through, uh, where that wall people talking about should have been put in here. And it, a lot, I, I remember now trying to break some of this stuff loose to get it out of there. But uh, each one of these are uh, 54 inches high, so the pallet was like 42 inches high with, with a, a piece, two pieces of plywood underneath of it. The crane would go in there and pull it out. Bob Burris had one focus, and that is to save the customers, right? So I figured out how we were going to collect orders and get those orders communicated to other warehouses. But Bob was empty that warehouse out, clean it up, repair it, and fill her back up so we'd be back in business in three months, you know, to the day, you know, we were. You know, all these, yeah. all of our people who thought they were going to be without a check. Yep. Bob brought them yep. all back to work. He set them up on shifts, and every yep. supervisor picked up a crew. Yep. We always pride ourselves that we didn't miss a paycheck. Did we miss a paycheck? No. I don't think we did. No, no. no. Which, a lot of the workers and a lot of us were thinking that our people, you know, in 13 weeks, they're going to have to go get other jobs, and when we get back in business, are they going to be with us? Well, now that Bob said to heck with it, we can run our own people better than hiring somebody. Yep. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of small family-owned major fires that we've had, at least half of them, maybe more, 75%, weren't able to get back in business. Ten days out, and not even, even less than ten days, Jack is asking me for change. And I was so happy that I walked into Jack with this, what I thought was a substantial check, like within a week. Really does yeah, and anytime we ever talk about the fire and and some of the of us that were around, you know, then it always comes up that um, you know they would be in there working alongside of um, Pop Jack Burris and Bob, and they were in there scrubbing away and cleaning away and moving cases just as much as as you know the rest of the, the employees. Just the way it brought us together, because you know you didn't mind getting in there and busting your tail you know, to work through something when you knew the owner was right there next to you, okay? He was working he'd as hard. He'd pop up anywhere. He, yeah. You'd be in the crane aisle clean up the thing and he'd, there he'd be. He be, it was everywhere. And just this, just that is the Burris family. That's not only Bob, the whole family is, you know, when they say they want you to do something, they're in there with you. And if you think about cleaning that up, putting this thing back together, re-engineering the whole process and having all that done, you know, in three months time. You couldn't even get the permitting approved today. Right. But that's really what started our, not started our culture, my father had probably started it, but picking up on Bob's addition to our culture, uh, each of us, he was had so much on him, he had to really rely on each of us to do our part. And it really made a hell of a group of great supervisors. And talking about Pete and my father and the banks and how we were able to get enough people to believe in us long enough that we're gonna live through this thing. Right. And I think they saw the combination of Dad and his integrity and Bob and his hard work, figured well, these guys are going to do it. And after the, after the fire, we were, I mean, you couldn't touch us after the fire. Right. Right.